So this is bound to be a bit of a longer one because this is some pretty huge patch notes. I do actually have some clarification as well. Um, and I'm going to tell you up front, I got clarification on something that we didn't have information on um, and you're not going to like it. Okay, so I will let you know where we are, what I got clarification on, um, and why you're not going to like it once we get to it. So they're calling this a slaughter beyond the purse. You know what? Whatever. <laughs> this update is coming out on March 27th, which we already knew. Um, looks like it'll be, I was actually a little disappointed. So for my area, it'll be shut down from March 20, March 27th from 1 a.m. to 3, 3 a.m., which is, this is 6 a.m. Eastern time. I was going to wake up early and cover it, so I don't know what I'm going to do for that now. I got to figure life out. Also, chat, uh, can I get someone to type in chat? I don't, I think my, my chat is broken. I don't, yeah, just, just give me like a little wave if you're here. <laughs> I, I don't know what's wrong with my thing. I might need to reset my browser. Um, Nope. Okay, we're not here. I see, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> all right. Thumbs up. Great. Love that. Dude tater tot uh you're you will i will forever remember your name because i couldn't read the word tater tot but anyway all right so i was actually gonna wake up early on the 27th to cover this so i don't know what i'm gonna do now i don't know when that video will go live i'll figure i'll figure my life out so new terrors await in 2020 for roadmap we already covered the roadmap so i'm not going to touch on this again people are saying that this could be an april fool's joke because of where the flag is it's not <laughs> it's not there's no way they would do that to us that would be toxic as hell um but yeah all right so this is all the stuff that we're getting in this update terra rifts oblivion pillars eternal equipment and the deckard cane elite quest i feel like something is missing from this flag though maybe we'll get to that so the age of unmaking is upon us the lord of terror has set his sights on sanctuary once more and evasion is mustering so basically it's just alluding to that we have a bunch of stuff coming because diablo is coming all right so a new tale so we have a new uh i guess side quest for deckard cane uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't know anything about Decker Kane at all. So there's that. So Terror Rifts. So Terror Rifts are another whatever. Agely I'm making our spike gateways throughout the Diablo's, uh, which Diablo's forces launch their assault. So you can see these on the map. This is what they'll look like. You will be able to see them on the map as such of like a portal. Um, Terror Rifts will be active every day from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. He's the main bro for three games. Well... I don't know. I don't know my homie. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, terrorists will be active at those times. Uh, during each block, three zones will be invaded at random with one terror rift portal appearing in a zone every th at 30 minute intervals. So they're going to be hot topics. Zones with active terror rift portals are denoted on the world map. Track down a portal to enter. So it's only one portal. Yikes. So these are going to be kind of hard to catch i didn't realize that he is he is to diablo what solaire is to dark souls bro i never played dark souls that means even less to me <laughs> uh so i actually didn't realize that this was going to be so rough um that's actually pretty rare so three zones will be invaded <laughs> uh pairing one in a zone at 30 minute intervals all right i'm a little worried by that Inside, throngs of brutish monsters will oppose you. Cut them down to acquire glowing red orbs known as... Oh, wow, they changed the name. Stygian Fragments. After gathering 200 fragments from fallen foes displayed via progress bar, scout around for a Stygian Spire, sacrificing the required fragments in one of these portals. One of these pointed beacons will initiate a one-on-one -on -one fight with a beefier opponent toppling this enemy will grant a reward chest wait did they change the name to this collect the fragments sacrifice them at the strategic whatever spire defeat the boss claim a reward chest complete this process as many times as you can in 13 minutes to press towards more plentiful rewards wait what complete this process as many times as you can in 13 minutes Oh, so you could just keep doing it. Interesting. For 13 minutes. Is this like dramatically different than what we were told last week? Like all of us? I'm so confused. Okay. There are a max of four of the spires that can appear. Stygian. 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 
Saj, I love you, bro. <laughs> Studgy, yeah. <laughs> I am special. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Receive the maximum awards for the crest run. Chest per run. Okay. You can earn rewards up to 10 times a week from terrorists, resetting each Monday at 3 a.m. Once you acquire all weekly rewards, you can continue to run terrorists, but will only be able to earn drops from enemies. Hold on. That's why we watch you? Thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I love y'all, man. I love y'all. So, okay, this is like dramatically different than what I thought it was already. Like, I'm pausing because I, I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, okay, so basically, these portals, the terrorists will spawn. Inside them, you have to collect 200. Yeah, once inside them, c gather 200 fragments from fallen foes displayed via progress bar, which is right there. Scout around for a, whatever, st G in <laughs> spire <laughs> sacrificing the required fireman to one of these pointed beacons will initiate a one-on-one -on -one fight with a beefier opponent okay so this is like a stronger version some a aka people we've already fought before clearly oh that's a pretty big health bar all right and then collect the collect the fragments sacrifice them and defeat the boss and claim a reward chest complete this process as many times you want in 13 minutes okay so you could you just keep running it but then you can only you can earn rewards up to 10 times a week from terrorists. From the chest? Oh, from the chest. Because once you've acquired all your weekly rewards, you can only get drops from enemies. Understood. Understood. Uh, you can blame Echo and Red. They sent me to you. That's fair. That's fair. Hey, welcome aboard, man. Uh, both Red and Echo are great people. Love working with both of them. I'm just trying to get Red off his monk. <laughs> a successful one run, whether solo or with a group. I thought, okay, never mind. I thought this had, I thought this was solo content. Dude, ugh, I'm, I'm already confused. Okay, whatever, continue. <laughs> Maybe this is just something different. We'll be met with a chance to earn eternal equipment. No, it's the same fucking thing. The rarest and most converted items in all of Sanctuary, should, should Hell's forces overtake you during a run, half of your fragments will be dropped. Okay, after responding, you can pick up your dropped fragments. All right. I'm trying to get him to do his own show, but he doesn't want to get in front of the camera. That's fair. Red's a good guy, though. I love Red. Um, all right. The key to continued carnage terror essences. Okay. Terror essence is an item that's essential to partaking in oblivion pillars. What? Okay. So oblivion pillars are what I was thinking these were. Okay. So this is just, this is just more. Whatever. Okay. Holy shit. Terror essence. So terror essence is now something in oblivion. All right. How do you get these then? Tear essences come from reward chests provided by Oh. For the best shot at getting your hands on eternal equipment, make sure to always have tear essence handy. If you find yourself falling short or having too many, essence can be bought and sold at the grand market for platinum. Shout out Red Neko. Good dudes. For sure, good dudes. Love them both. Okay, so there are still oblivion pillars. Dude, I, this this whole pillar thing was confusing the hell out of me. We, I I feel like I didn't know about this. <laughs> anyway, so there's that. All right, so now we're going on. You have the terror essence, which you get from the crest runs, which we knew about. Oblivion pillars. Oblivion pillars are the age of unmaking's pinnacle challenge and the ultimate test of valor. For the most seasoned demon slayers, both a terror essence and playing in Inferno difficulty one or higher is required to activate a Oblivion Pillar. But experienced adventurers equipped for pulse-pounding combat will fare best in this test of might, i.e. whales. I'll call it how it is. So, a terror essence. This is seen singular. Okay. Oblivion Pillars can be found near where terror rifts spawn in each zone and are simple, uh, accessible at any time. Accessible at any time. Use a a terror essence from your inventory to d divine the location of the pillar. Head there and steal steal yourself. Waves of supercharged monsters or possibly gold crazed goblins will rush you. You must hold your ground, survive increasingly vigorous attacks, and strike them down before the clock runs out. If you succeed, the chance to earn eternal equipment and other rewards shall be your spoils. Okay. 
So these are just ways and ways of bullshit that come at you. Got it. And then a boss. Cool. So 15. Wow. Look at that. Look at the health difference, y'all. This is 15.38 mil health on the summoner compared to, um, where was it? Compared to less than 1 million for the rift. Jesus. 15. What? That's a 1500% increase. Jesus Christ. But you only need one. So I was under the impression you needed 200. I guess the 200 was what those other things are for the rifts. Okay. So wait, let's, let's review that again. Where, where do these pop up? Oblivion Pillars? Okay, so they just look like this. They're different, but they're in the same area. And you only need one of those. Okay. Hellslayer Bounties. Diablo's growing influence has uh, warped sec sections of Sanctuary into a, a nightmarish hellscape. When he's in their home, being slowly overtaken by dark forces, usual wearing immorals and shadows have put out a contract on their shared enemy. Come one, come all. Fearless fighters are needed to eliminate heartless threats. Okay, so this is the bounties that we heard about. Makes sense. Groups or solo players on Inferno difficulty one and above can combine their four normal active bounties into a Hellslayer bounty at the bounty board for the cost of one terror essence. Combining these bounties makes Hellfire or Hellslayer bounties are four times more valuable than a typical bounty okay so there that was my one question is was this going to be less valuable if you ran it like you know what i mean instead of doing the four bounties so okay so it, it's eight times actually so it's better whoa whoa whoa, whoa. it's not times four though it's times eight so if you're only combining four of these and you get times eight, this is way better, right? Am I missing something, chat? Okay. Once done, travel to the zone listed on your bounty. Locate the Hellslayer bounties portal and make your stand against vicious hordes in a more forgiving, forgiving style of a billion fillers gameplay. Okay, so this is a much smaller. Makes sense. So I guess to me, though, you don't always get a times four bounty. This just guarantees a times eight bounty. So it's still better. Okay. So this is why I was saying, guys, to save your bounty. So you can just combine them all. Eternal equipment. We're getting to the part that you're not going to like. Long forgotten power has just been rediscovered in the form of eternal equipment. This new item is both the rarest and strongest in Sanctuary. Eternal equipment can only drop from Terror Rifts, Oblivion Pillars, Hellslayer, and Hellslayer Bounties. Contains three attributes and four magic affixes, two from the existing pool of affixes, and two from a new pool of class-specific uh, affixes. So this is a different sneak peek, by the way, than what we saw last time. Can uh, can be an item of any primary slot, good to know. Can contain cursed or ancestral gear. I do wish it looked a little cooler. This looks a little bland. Like, I was expecting it to, like, really pop if it was going to be, like, the truly best in slot. So bone spirits, skill attack range increased by 8%, commander, command skeletons. Command Skeletons now has a 10% chance to spawn an extra adjusting their cap. Okay. Interesting. With great power comes. Um, all right. So these are all the different affixes. We're not going to cover this. They, they're accessible to you guys if you want to read it. Very interesting stuff there. Um, fastest. Uh, Fates Entangled New 1v1 Duel. So this was another thing that people are really excited about. But before we get into that, here's the thing with, that I wanted to tell you guys for uh, the new eternal equipment. I did get clarification. These will not change when you class change. They will not. We did confirm that. We have been given the green light to share it. These will not change when you class change. However, they did say that this is just the tip of the iceberg for uh this type of equipment um so that there is more coming but as of right now eternal equipment will not do anything when you transfer it will be stuck or class change it will be stuck on the class that it was assigned to so a bit of a yikes at least in my opinion uh but you know it's it's it is what it is right yeah i'm not gonna lie i was a little disappointed to hear that so yeah eternal gear will not class change when you class change it will nothing will happen it will be if it has this and it is a necro skill it will still have a necro skill on it you will have to completely refarm on whatever new class you go to so if you like class changing and you want to be tippity top min maxed 
Sorry, <laughs> but you have way more grinding. So you're definitely going to want to be on whatever class you want to make your primary because these new uh, eternal equipment will not class change. Can't confirm. Yikes. Let me know what you guys think, though, because this is a little, this is a lot. This is a lot, a lot. <sighs> oh, boy. Stressful times. So, yeah, um, find out what class you want most. Yeah, literally. So, no class changing. Guess I'm going back to Necro. Yeah, touch. That's what I was thinking. Now, there is, they did change something that, I don't know if you guys have read this yet, that is going to be good for not being able to class change as efficiently. And I'll show you that in a second. But I'm a little worried, actually. So, like, as a content creator... I change class all the time, like all the time. Um, and I don't, I don't know, <laughs> admittedly. So there is a 004 on the magic effects. How does it work? Um, my understanding is that if you were to get this same thing on another slot, so like these are pants, eternal gear. If you get this same exact one on another slot, say like a headpiece with this, um, it would increase the percent. So it, like it's sort of like a set bonus. So you get all four and it gets stronger is my understanding of what it is. Um, they don't call it out very well, but if you do get up to four, that's when you get it a little bit stronger. Yeah, so either the percent goes up or the damage goes up, depending on what it is. Um, so again, you could, and theoretically, you could get, what, two? I'm mathing. I think we have eight slots, right? So you can get four. Yeah, we have eight slots. So you can get four pieces or four magic affixes doubled. Or, you know what I mean? I think if you get them the same exact thing, technically, that's a lot of min-maxing. That's like the curse gear. Yeah, yeah, just like curse gear. Exactly like curse gear. Just no downsides. The more the more you have, the stronger. Yeah, exactly. Oop, that's all right. Touch into what you meant there. All right, so there's the news for that. All right, then there's all these. Now let's go on to the rest of the stuff. And I, I I will probably class change today with this information. So I just don't know. I don't know what class. So like for me, I love the wizard. The wizard has always been my absolute favorite class. You can read that, but not Stygian. Because <laughs> you spelled it how my brain works. <laughs> But good point. Fair point, fair point. So I don't know who I want to be, though. I've always liked the wizard. The wizard has been my main squeeze for a long time. But a lot of other content creators are the wizard. So that is a sort of like a turn off for me. I don't want to be just another wizard like everyone else. I want to like be a class that like people will find value in. Um, I So for me, I'm considering either wizard or blood knight are the two that I am very strongly considering. Actually, I, I take that back. I probably won't class change today. I want to try to finish my build for my Demon Hunter, um, which I need exactly one piece to do. But I will, in terms of this permanent change, I will either be the Blood Knight or the Wizard. I don't know which one. Sounds like a lot of thinking before patch, such as what class to go for. Oh, it totally is. I, I'm very stuck on where I want to be, but... Yeah, so and it doesn't sound like it'll be a permanent thing, uh, but at least this will be what it is until they add more to the eternal equipment. Anyway, so Fates Entangled, new 1v1 duel. Step toward, to, step forward to your mark, draw your blade, lances, blah, blah, blah. All right, so you can go up here. You can see somebody has a two win streak here. All right, so it's literally in this area is where you can 1v1. So you go up here, you hit the challenge. They have to accept it. It says for 24 hours how long your streak is, which is kind of cool. Uh, the winner of the duel will receive a specially marked ear. What? That records the opponent's defeat information marking the time they were successfully dispatched. If you manage to win more than one duel, in a row, you'll receive a mark in game that signifies your consecutive streaks, which resets at the end of the day. So you have to go there. Um, so it sounds like they do have to be on your server. You have to go here, meet up, you know, offer to duel, accept the duel, and then you duel. It does last for 60 seconds. Um, a duel is won when a player is successfully killed or the 60 second countdown is ended. If the duel is ended by a timer, the player with the higher percentage of health is declared the victor. That's what I've been asking for. It should have let us uh, wager gold. Oh, yes. Can you imagine? He said um, wager gold, either 0 to 100K. That would be sick. 
That's a good idea, actually. I was hoping this would be not tied to a server so that I could do a uh, tournament, you know, like with a code where you can join a room and then do 1v1s. I think that would be so sick. Uh, uh, you just said, uh, my clan mentions this 1v1 can be toxic between dispute clan players when they face off to show their egos. Oh, yeah, this is going to be ego central. A lot, a lot of uh, measuring of dicks here. <laughs> All right, so that's a pretty cool addition, though. So new legendary gems. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. 